Greetings again from Dr. Bill White, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about palatal separation. Uh, that seems to be, uh, well, it is one of the most important tools that we have in orthodontics to restore something that went wrong back from uh, functional problems that people have. Now, I feel like it, uh, the child nursing uh, had a lot of effect on the, the maxilla developing in, uh, not as wide as it should be and you get cross bites and all these other things uh, because of uh, lack of proper function. Now the people that I've noticed that nurse for a long time and they use the airway and have to have to use it and it develops and the maxilla develops. Uh, now, when it comes to getting somebody in that has this narrow palate, uh, nearly every one of them, we put a, a rapid palatal expander in. So I just wanted to run over the one that we use. I think the one I got here has been used, and I just put it back on something and took some pictures of it. Uh, so anyway, we'll take a look at that Go. <coughs> All right, this is just a type of dot with a, it's got a large arch wire on the bottom uh, doing some expansion where you just bring the upper out and you got it further and this is, you want to expand both arches. You can just drop down below and put one of these big daddy arch wires on and spread it uh, to match when it comes up. Now we started this uh, opening or putting the pressure between the centrals and that's where most of the bone structure if you look at the one we've got on the skull you'll see the uh, anterior nasal spine you know the tooth in here and then it goes out and there's a, a lot of bone in this area so we put something right here and it uses the teeth to move this apart but we've been able to expand palates on a lot of people uh, that are 40 years old, not uh, late 40s, the early 40s or the uh, late 30s or people who are 30 years old were able to do that. Now when uh, I think this Dr. Donald Timms in England wrote a book on him and uh, he, I talked to him and said only could open these palettes up to about 17 or 18. And uh, we've been already doing them up in the 30s. And the way we did is just a sliding arch wire. This arch wire goes out here, it goes past and curls down back here. And then this pressure builds up in here and it'll separate it here. Now as soon as the separator uh, is comes up, I mean you can see it come up, uh, there is no well, there are no nerve endings in the uh, palatal suture. Uh, that's hard to believe, but anyway, uh, when you're pulling and trying to get it apart, it bothers the person, it hurts a little bit. But once they give and go apart, they rarely ever have any discomfort at all. And uh, that's happened many, many times for me, so Anyway, I'll just pass that on while we're doing this. Uh, now, that's the way you put an open coil spring in there with a lot of pressure on it, and it it adds to it. I was thinking, uh, uh, if I were still a young man, <laughs> I would put a screw or two or something in, in areas like this and put a some type of uh, tad that had an opening in it and put a spring in there and you come down to it. This could open up using the bone structure rather than the tooth and then the periodontal membrane and all that. Uh, the tooth tends to move too. So I would like for somebody who does a lot with tads to try this and let's put the tabs in between. Maybe somebody already has, I don't know. And put a, 
a spring on a sliding arch wire between there. Uh, this works. I don't care. Uh, you can take somebody that you can't open when they're uh, 18, 19, 20, in the early 20s, and you can open them up into their uh, up to 40. Uh, and we've done that. And I've taken some people and just and they were really older and opened them and just kept expanding it. All right, let's let's go on to another thing here. That's just the uh, the spring showing it, and this was just widening the lower arch to kind of match it. Uh, this palatal separator looks pretty pretty bad here, but apparently it's one that we had used and I just slipped it back on the type of dot just to uh, show that. And here is the uh, open coil spring that we pushed in between here and it's putting pressure on this going in both directions. And one that you can't, now if you take, see the separators back in here around the motors and it's going across like this the only thing you're pushing pressure here, but you're trying to open something here. You want your pressure, if you could get it, exactly opposite where your force is holding it back, you know, where you can separate that down there. But this will carry you through. And uh, I've had people that were students in these seminars that come back and say they had done somebody in their 40s and up to 45 or so. All right, that's the separator. Now, when you put one in, make darn sure you put the the opening thing toward the front. You slip it in here, and then you move your opener back like that, and that widens this thing one quarter of a millimeter. <coughs> and so we open about a quarter of a millimeter each day. A lot of people are making separators now that aren't on banded teeth. I want the separator to be on the banded tooth, if at all possible, and that is cemented in. There's no give to it at all, so that as it brings the As it brings the tooth out, if it is really cemented properly and that band is hugging it, it will widen the roots and everything on it. It won't just lean the tooth out like that. And that's what you really want. You want to get the roots of the teeth out. Like you don't want to push on the crowns and have them do like this. Now some people put bars up there. I put a little deal here just to show one. Now, if you make this and you've got this tooth goes out and it's really hard. Now I have people that put chunks of acrylic in here. Nothing on here to hold this back. And as they widen this out, the teeth will tilt this way and you do not want the space up here to roots of the teeth. You want, I mean, you do want the space up there. If you just push the tooth, the roots come together, actually. So you want to carry this thing right on out as wide as you need to, to restore the airway. Now, when you first crack it out, it'll lean a little. And if you get out there, then we just keep it in contact for several months before we take this out of their mouth. Now the crown itself, if it, the tooth leans some, there will be a, a little difference. In other words, the tooth leaning like that, then uh, the uh, crown, the teeth that meet underneath here will have a little space between them. In other words, if the roots are up here, now, if you carry these roots on out here, then the crown's going to be level. The bottom one, which you're not, 
wouldn't be changed, but the upper one doesn't. So we hold it in there for a good long while. And if you have it cemented properly, it'll carry the root structure out with the crown or just about, and then you wear this thing for several months before you take it out. Uh, it puts a pressure on the lingual cusp and then the tooth will line up like that. And that's what you want. You want this airway up above on this. And that's the main thing that we're going after. And so anything that doesn't do that, and so people think, oh, it's a lot easier just to put a big chunk of acrylic down here, fetting against that and so and push it out. But you, you just tilt in the teeth in many instances. You can't make that actually hold on to them like that. Sometimes they go over and put acrylic on top of the tooth and do other things uh, with it. But I found it just band the teeth properly. And what we do, we get them in. We separate their teeth really good. And you know, before we try to put the bands on, we put the bands on the teeth and then we take an impression of it, take the teeth off uh, out of the impression and put them back on the, on the model that you're going to be forming. You, you put it back in the impression, pour it up, and then the, the, break, the bands will be on the models. And now we take them off of that model, and when we get ready to cement them, we've still got the separation. We put this thing in their mouth and press it up, and you can't ever get it all the way up, or at least I, I can't without, because the teeth aren't perfectly lined up. You know, if one tooth is a little off or something, it'll go and stop. But if you leave that in their mouth for about a week, those teeth will move around and the palatal separator will go all the way in. Now that's not this uh, pellet separator there. I don't like that. But the kind that you, you put on like this, you leave that thing in uncemented for about a week. Now it uh, has a bad odor when you go to take it out. You might as well uh, tell them it'll go. you've got to rinse it and wash it and use mouthwash and everything else. But that palatal separator will go to place, and that's the secret <coughs> of getting it cemented all the way, is wearing it uncemented for about a week. Take it out and clean it real good, fill it with cement, and try to press on each one, see the cement come out around the edges down at the bottom. And if that thing is really cemented in, I have never had one of them come out until you're ready to take it out. So anyway, this is just uh, something to uh, let you know some of the little things about palatal separation. Now there's a lot of companies make this, and I don't say which one, is this, uh, you can get a good separator. Sometimes we get one that's open as wide as it'll go. All right, I'm going to close out and say goodbye.